I'm hearing him say, what we have in Josh Allen is a Patrick Mahomes level quarterback exactly what that does not need the sort of top notch wide receiver. I happen to agree. I also happen to be a Bills fan. How do you feel about this strategy? Uh, look, it's I, I get it, and I think you're right that that's what he's saying. That you know, Patrick Mahomes just won back to back uh, Super Bowls. Who's his number one wide Rasheed receiver? Rice. Right, and Rasheed Rice may not be there at the start of the season. So it's a great comparison, and you're building your guy up, and that's part of your job. So I, I respect and I get it, and I don't disagree. I think Josh Allen is that good, right? And we've seen great. we've seen the, the greatness out of Allen. We've seen the kind of cowboy in, which gets him in a little bit of trouble when he takes too many chances and has too much self-belief uh, on a football field. But there's a but to that. What do you mean? And the but to that is... Of course you're saying it because you don't have one, right? right? If you had one, you wouldn't be saying it, yeah. right? And so it's a game we're playing here. You also, and I forget this all the time, I'm guilty of it, Tre like Trent Balky in Jacksonville, <laughs> you know, <laughs> being in Buffalo, <laughs> like they're human beings. So being also answers to people. And if I'm the Pagula family, the owners of the Buffalo Bills, and I knew this kind of this type of year was coming because of the cap situation we had. I'm also now testing you. What are you going to do to get us out of it? What are you going to do to make sure we have a better than fighters chance every year mm -hmm. to win a Super Bowl? Because the one thing we all agree on is they do have a world class quarterback, and yeah. they're wasting them. Right? You have a top five quarterback, and you've been to one AFC Championship game, and you've never obviously been to the Super Bowl, and now he's going into year seven or eight, right? So now it's going to be like, how many more years are we going to get out of a healthy Josh Allen that we just waste? So when you're the GM and you now have a team the way it sits in the moment who doesn't have a legitimate number one, and I'll, I'll double down on that, or a legitimate number two, their best wide receiver is a slot receiver who had a good year last year, but he's not a go-to guy. And I respect the fact that they're built around the tight ends, and I get all that. But now you're trying to convince me, and I know better, that we're going to win a lot of games without having a deep threat, without having a legitimate 100 reception guy. And that's too cute for me. Because if you can get guys like that, you get guys like that. And when you have a guy like that, you don't let a guy like that walk out the door essentially for nothing. Yeah. They got nothing this year out of the Diggs trade. And yes, it's a second round pick next year. But in the moment, which is all fans care about, I lost a legitimate top 10 wide receiver. And what do I have in his place? Nothing. And that's a problem. Yeah, and the other but is, you know, Patrick Mahomes also had a top five defense to back him up. Sure did. The Bills don't right now. You're talking about Michael Hyde, Poyer, and, this, and Milano coming off the ACL. Yeah. Like, the, the reason why Patrick Mahomes remained stagnant and was in the middle of the road because that defense got him off to get him multiple opportunities. And stop there. And let's just be fair about one other thing. While Allen is a legitimate great quarterback, right, a top five quarterback, he's still not Patrick Mahomes. He's not. No one is. Right. And that's the problem. And it's the right comparison because Mahomes is one without. He's the only guy in the league that's going to win a Super Bowl, multiple Super Bowls, without having that rock star number one wide receiver. And, I'm, and, sure, I'm, I'll, and I'll give you one better than that because I said this a year ago. I think McDermott was being set up to be the scapegoat this year because it's going to be a bad year for you, Bill. Let's, let's, let's let him lose he, some games before we start to talk about wasted well, years they can't and bad afford, year. They can't. Let, this has not been a great offseason, but let's, 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 let, let's let them lose some games. I'm going to help you out. Putting dirt on the grave. I don't Bills. want you to be surprised, so I'm going to help you out. <laughs> oh, you're just looking out for me. It's going to be a tough year for you. Okay. <laughs> All right? I just want to help you out. We'll you, got, you got four straight divisional titles. You did nothing with it. It's my turn. We'll you got, see. You got, you got we'll a see. tough year. Tough we'll year. See. We'll tough see. Year. But I will say this. The last thing I was going to say is, Sean McDermott's also not Andy Reid, right? Josh Allen's not Patrick Mahomes. Sean McDermott, who did a great job rebuilding the Bills and deserves all the credit for taking a team that hadn't gone to the playoffs in like 20 years and making them a perennial playoff team and a division champion, and he deserves the flowers he gets for that. He ain't Andy Reid either. Well, one thing about the AFC East we can definitely agree on is the Patriots will sure. be in last place. I think we can all and agree on that. move on yeah. to second and football. It is the Patriots. He is officially the director of scouting. He's also the de facto general manager. Elliot Wolf had this to say about the Patriots draft strategy. Remember, they sit at three and they desperately need a quarterback. They Definitely. sit at three, and they need a quarterback. Yeah. Are they overthinking this? Why don't they just get a quarterback at three? Well, first off, how often do you see the director of scouting speaking for an organization when before the draft? When you've had Bill draft? Belichick be the GM for <laughs> like, the last 20 years. Right. You don't have a GM. They don't have one. 
So that guy shouldn't talk. That guy sold me a brown bond at Carvel yesterday. <laughs> like, what, what, like, what are we talking about here? Hey, and by the way, reference. you've done a bad job scouting. I would, I would lay low. Yeah, that's fair. I'd be the guy they can't find. Like, where'd Billy go? <laughs> oh, he's out there scouting. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. show up because that's how you get fired. Look, I think they take a quarterback uh, unless you get overwhelmed, which obviously that's why he says we're open for business. And there is, uh, I think, some smoke around the Denver Broncos in which they are talking about giving up Patrick Sertain and another first-round pick next year to move up at some place in the top five uh, to get their quarterback. So, you know, the Patriots would be one of those teams that, in theory, could maybe get, you know, a haul of picks from a team like the Denver Broncos who right now sit at 12, unless, of course, you have fallen in love with an available quarterback. And that's the trump card here. Mayor Daniels will probably be there. Right, so you don't know. So you know Caleb's done. Forget about him. The real question is, who does Washington draft, right? Because if I'm high on Daniels and they take Drake May, I get my quarterback. Mm -hmm. If I'm high on Daniels and they take him, well, now I'm not getting my quarterback, so I am open for business. And the Denver Broncos are going to be very, very aggressive here by all accounts of the guys and gals that covered the Broncos in Denver. And I think Sean Payton pretty much said it as well. Yeah, we're going to look to do something in this draft because we need a quarterback. I can make the joke you had a quarterback, but you hated him. Uh, and you wouldn't be in the market for a quarterback if you just had an open mind to Russell Wilson being your guy. But could you imagine Patrick Sertain, next year's number one, and maybe more, to move from 12 to 3 or 4 or 5, I think that's on the table. And I would not be surprised if Denver tries to make a big play. Yeah, but if I'm the Patriots, I'm getting the hell out of that three spot. You're, you're Unless rocking. you have the quarterback you want. Even there's not outside of Caleb Williams, there's not a quarterback who's a plug and play guy right now. And they don't have a roster to support a young quarterback. Yeah. If you talk about one thing Caleb Williams is walking into, he has he has DJ Moore, Keenan Allen, he has Great point, William. He has a running back, he has a defense, right? So Caleb Williams, they handed him the keys to the Porsche. Just don't crash it. That Patriots roster is not good. I mean, you're yeah. talking about it like from a receiving court, Juju, Kendrick Bourne, like all those guys are shell ups. Kendrick is by Henry, Henry Hunter is okay as a tight end. He's a good rug blocking tight end. But overall, that from a roster standpoint, yeah. there's nobody going to help well, yeah, but it, it seems like a like a Bryce Young situation. It's like it's like it you feels can come like in, that. you're a rookie, you're the guy, go ahead and start. Oh, by the way, you're not gonna get any protection, no. you're not gonna have any weapons, and it's gonna be a bad year. Yeah, for but you. I, I'm gonna kick back on that just a little bit. That's that's not why you don't take the quarterback. Because outside of Chicago, you're gonna, is, if, if they take a young quarterback, it's, it's going to be the same thing that happened to Zach Wilson. Okay, but but the point is, if they think, forget who the name is, you pick your favorite name Daniels in the May, draft. Daniels and there. If they think that guy is a franchise quarterback, you're going to take him. Because but you can't play him. But, but Chicago is a very unique situation where they're a pretty good team, a good shell around wherever the quarterback's going to be. I mean, every other year, if you're picking top two or three and you're picking a quarterback, you suck. That's why you're picking top two or three. So I, you can't say, well, you don't have the support team around him to pick the quarterback. If you think, I don't care what the guy's name is, yep. that that guy is a legitimate franchise quarterback, you take him. And sure. my pushback is the way the division set up, the way the Dolphins look, the way the Jets look, yeah. and the way the Buffalo Bills are going to look, they have to be able to compete, and they can't compete within their own division right now. You start a young quarterback, it will set you back another well, five years. Well, but that's the deal. If you draft a quarterback and don't have the talent around him, you're telling your fan base it's a project, we're, we're rebuilding. And fans can accept that. If you get the quarterback. Now, Jacoby Brissett's back there again, right, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah. Uh, not that he's the end. He's, he's obviously he's not. He's by Kobe. Yeah, but the, there you go. <laughs> but the reality is that I totally disagree with your thought process on that. If you think one of them kids is a franchise guy, it's going to be a tough year. And then you build off that. But you don't not take the quarterback if you think the kid's a rock star. Craig, they can't, they can't score touchdowns or stop anybody. Yeah. You need more talent and more pieces. Yeah. Go get it. Do you know what Bill Belichick said in regards to what the director of scouting had to say? Oh, there it goes. Oh. Right there. Right on cue. Nice job, guys. Right nice job, guys. for that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey there. Thank you so much for watching The Carton Show. You can subscribe right here to get all the latest bits and segments from the show. And by the way, while you're at it, we have a lot of great shows on FS1. So check them out, too.